Well, despite Washington's resolution of the debt ceiling deadlock, the fundamentals for a potential to default remain unchanged. That's why a Chinese agency has downgraded the U.S. credit rating. They say the fundamental situation that the debt growth rate significantly outpaces that of fiscal income and gross domestic product remains unchanged. And they added that Washington's solvency was vulnerable as old debts were still repaid through raising new debts. Hence, the government is still approaching the verge of default crisis, a situation that cannot be substantially alleviated in the foreseeable future. So in other words, our biggest creditor has downgraded our rating and will now make it even more expensive for the U.S. to borrow money. But hey, what's the answer to all of this? I know, raise the debt ceiling indefinitely. Here's Gigi Arnetta to explain. Thank you, Leanne. So the bill last night basically put the United States of America into perpetual debt. Let me explain. What happens now is instead of waiting and deciding on a debt ceiling, our government will automatically default to a higher debt ceiling, which means we're authorizing ourselves to spend more money unless something happens in the House. So basically the guys up on Capitol Hill have a lot of work to do to keep the debt ceiling from automatically going up, which is crazy because who does business that way? And something else to look at. What are the Chinese and the other people that we owe money to thinking? It's like having a credit card and just saying, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and keep charging. And the person who's loaning us the money has no power over that. Well, in theory, the way we're doing it anyway. So I'm sure that the Chinese right now are frowning at the fact that we just think we can keep spending. Again, this bill is available online. Back to you, Leanne. Oh, but that's okay. Just ignore that. It doesn't make any sense. But overspending is the new normal now in the Obama administration. And if you have a problem with that, King Obama says, ignore the naysayers. All of us need to stop focusing on the lobbyists and the bloggers and the talking heads on radio and the professional activists who profit from conflict and focus on what the majority of Americans sent us here to do. What are you still doing here? Did you not hear your dear leader? He said to ignore us here at the truth-telling media and just allow him and his ilk to continue doing the job that they're there to do. Destroy America. That's right. He wants you to ignore the fact that under Obama, our deficit is off the charts. And he wants to continue to just increase spending in his diabolical pursuit of destroying this country. He wants you to just listen to him and his mainstream media bootlickers and look away, just look away as they rob us and future generations of our livelihood and our sovereignty. He wants you to look away from the outlets that give you the cold, hard facts about what's really going on and just focus your attention on the media that wants to continue not reporting on reality. Don't believe me? Well. When was the last time you heard the mainstream media reporting on the debacle that is Obamacare? As the blob grows, a.k.a. the U.S. government, Obamacare will not go away. Except to India, of course, because the company who's handling the healthcare.gov site outsources to India. Way to go, Obama, shipping our jobs overseas. And here's the kicker. Now hold on to your seats, because it sounds like Solyndra. CGI is a Canada-based company that was actually fired because it couldn't deliver in Canada. CGI's federal parent company, Montreal-based CGI Group, was officially terminated in September 2012 by an Ontario government health agency after the firm missed three years of deadlines and failed to deliver the province's flagship online medical registry. John McAfee, who founded the cybersecurity company of the same name but's no longer associated with it, said, I'll ask you your social security, your date of birth, and an hour later, I can empty your bank account. The Obamacare websites, he said, have no safeguards. And the hardest thing to wrap your head around is the fact that there's so many people without health insurance and they don't have it because they can't afford it. And looking at the Affordable Health Care Act, well, it's not that affordable. So if you spend roughly $300 a month for your premium, you also have to add in your $5,000 deductible if you're looking at the bronze plan, and you're looking at about $10,000 out of pocket when you do the math. 
So what is a person supposed to do if they've lost their job? I mean, it comes from your taxes from the year before. Think about it. Does it really solve the problem of people not having health care? So before I go, marinate in this for a moment. The government's telling you you have to buy health care. You don't know how much it's going to cost exactly. You're not really sure what kind of coverage you're going to get exactly. You don't know how much you're going to pay in prescriptions exactly. And it's probably going to come out of your bank account, which means they have access to your uh, finances. Or maybe the IRS will show up at your door with a gun. I'm Gigi Arnetta for the InfoWars Nightly News. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.